We're going to Yorkton to meet this guy named Kelly who made downtown Yorkton out of Lego. So now I'm going to pack this stuff in the car and we're going to spot up and get revenge on Bob by leaving him at Yorkton. John, are you ready for Yorkton? Oh yeah, just pack this stuff in the car. I'll help you. So this is what the interior is like. So there's an apartment upstairs and uh, with a bed and the uh, living room. And then downstairs is just exactly the same way that my store used to be. So I had a desk here, a brown desk, with the skateboards on the walls, hats up there, this little air conditioner above the window. So everything's just the way that the store used to be. What's the times? Well, that's kind of a little The apartment up there wasn't as nice as my little Lego apartment. Where do you get your Lego bricks? Uh, a lot of Lego bricks come from sets. So, uh, so sometimes I'll buy a set and I'll just like use the pieces for other things. But mostly I use a website called Bricklink, and you can go on there and you can buy some, like the specific pieces that you want for stuff. Or I order them from Lego directly. So. How did you design your project? Uh, the project? The buildings where you chose were uh, special buildings of Yorkton architecture. So buildings that were. Um, uh, here for like a long time or just had a, a good meaning. So uh, after we chose the buildings that we wanted, then I used some software called LDD. Uh, it's called Le Lego Digital Designer. And so that you can go on the computer and you can build with all the bricks, all the stuff that Lego would have for pieces, um, except you don't have to own them. You can just have like digital copies. So you can just use them piece by piece. And so some of these models use thousands of pieces. So I didn't have to buy anything before seeing if like the, the buildings would actually work. What is your Sorry. Oh, my favorite creation. Okay, um, for Lego sets, one of my favorite would be like Ninjago City because there's so much going on. There's so many stores and so many buildings in that one. That's this uh, building right here. But for the uh, buildings that I've made myself, um, I think either the train station, which was uh, really cool, lots of pieces to make, or also the Hudson Bay building. That one is really cool for this one. Uh, so that one is a really cool building that's been in New York since 19. So that one's a, a really cool one to see in Lego. 
and it's many figure scale, so we can uh, we play with that with like little guys and they would fit in perfectly. What's your biggest creation in the box? The biggest creation would be the train station right there, which um, I think uh, I might have mentioned to you guys how big it is. Do you want to take a guess at how many pieces it was? Do you remember? Just, yeah, you're really super close. So for that one, of uh, just the little black tiles that are used for the shingles, there is 2,700 pieces of shingle tiles. that are like one by one little okay. cheese slopes are called for little pieces. Lots and lots of pieces. That would and how you use those for your Yeah, so I made it so that you could use the pieces small enough that it could spell out the word or the name Yorkton, and then, uh, then that would help figure out the scale of what the building would be sized. What happens to the Lego at the end of the show? This will all just go back to my house. So I have a, all the basements set up. It's a, um, on tables so I can play with this and my son can play with this as like a, a Lego city just as you see it is here. Have you ever been to Legoland? I have not. Have you guys been to Legoland? No, uh, no but we're planning. Did anyone help you build this? Uh, my son helped me build it. But, uh, Sure, I'd love to. My name is Donald Stein, and I'm the director of the Godfrey Dean Art Gallery. Why did you choose to do a Lego installation? Why did I choose to do a Lego installation? You know, we worked on this idea for a really long time. We wanted to do something that would uh, make kids and young people and families come to the gallery and learn about what we do here and have some fun at the same time. What's the most interest reacting to the installation? You know, the most interesting thing for me to see is that no matter whether people are six years old or 80 years old, they come here because they love Lego and they all, when they walk in, go, oh, no, and they have no idea. So just how dramatic everybody is. Where is the farthest place someone has come from? Every year here, we get people from all over Canada because we're on the Trans-Canada Highway, the northern route. So this year again, we have people from almost every province from coast like to coast. Quebec. Yeah, somebody from Quebec, Quebec was just here today. But we now have lots of out-of-town people coming to visit family or to make a trip to Canada, and they're coming here. They maybe wouldn't have before, so we've had people from Germany and England. But I think the farthest away is there's a young man here and he's an exchange student from Brazil. So he came here right away because they love Lego in Brazil too. Who knew Lego could spread that far? Who knew? How, all... how long have you been doing this? I've been doing my job, do you mean? Yeah. I've been doing my job here for about 10 or 11 years now. And before that, I've done it in another uh, different organizations for quite a long time. I love my job. It's really fun because I get to do projects like this and still meet fun people like you guys and all our visitors. I guess it would be pretty fun. It's pretty cool or I wouldn't be still doing it because I really love it. It's a, it's thank a, you for talking to us. Thank you for coming again. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Hey Tom, I got to go to the washroom. I'll meet you back in the car. Go! Oh, it's on the hall, the left. Perfect. Let's go, let's go, let's go.
Thank <laughs> you.